What's up, the YouTube? Welcome back to another video, I guess crappy video from the Guitar Slinger Hockey Channel. Um, right here you have a CCM AS3 Pro Hockey Skate. Uh, what I would like to do today is brag a little bit about the fact that I actually have Step Steel, the good stuff. Goodbye, crappy excess steel. That is Step Steel Black Steel. Finally got a set of those. Um, I also got a set of the free step steel that comes with it. They sent CCM sent this to me. This is 271. This is just the regular stainless stuff versus the black steel, uh, which I do notice a difference. I prefer. Um, hey, if you guys want to buy this for me from me, go ahead and let me know. 90 bucks. Anybody who wants it. Anyways, I digress. Um, okay, so. Just throwing the skate out here for a quick shameless plug just because I like the skates a lot. Um, I think I've got them dialed into the way I like them. But today's video is going to be about a very, like, I don't know, it's hardly ever discussed as far as I can say. And I think it's uh, probably because most people don't think it's as big a deal as I do, but uh, that's fine. Um, so it's going to be two part today. It is going to be all about hockey skate insoles. Uh, so basically, I'm going to talk about the insoles that are retail model that you uh, just anyone can go out and buy for the most part. Um, the good ones and the bad ones and some specs about them that you definitely want to know. And then I'm also going to talk about um, some custom hockey skate insoles that I recently had made for myself. And I wanted to give you the specifications on them. Obviously, my insoles wouldn't fit you. But the specifications on them, I think, turned out to be a real winner in the event that you ever do have custom insoles made for your, specifically for your hockey skate or even your figure skate, if you're a figure skater. Um, they obviously uh, are not the same as the ones that would go in your insoles. So um, I will remove the skate from the picture. And so first off, I'm going to share with you guys the main uh, good old standard insoles that we all see out there nowadays. So we got the CCM Ortho Move. We got everybody's favorite, the yellow Superfoot, Superfeet Carbon. We have a Old CCM, this was prior to the CCM Ortho moves. These are the uh, insoles that were made by Curex. And we have the other one, which is the Bauer Speed Plate Dose. And uh, got two more here on the table that I'm going to share with you here. Um, this is also a retail insole that is made a company called Viva Sport and um, it's by PDAG P-E-D-A-G uh, you can get these on Amazon for 50 bucks. Uh, I'm going to speak to these. These are the only ones here that are not um, they're not hockey skate specific. One of the main reasons why you might want to go with a um, a custom insole is if you are like me and you have a permanent foot injury. Um, I received, uh, shoot, January of 2019, um, a pair of custom true skates that were made so tight for me, after skating them for one month, they tore the tendon in my big toe, and that is now a permanent injury, so I get to enjoy that forever. Um, there is no surgery that will fix it effectively, is what I've found out over the course of the last year or so. So, um, as a result, I get to take anti-inflammatory and then have try to find the world's best insole. So right, right here we got the, the custom stuff, or excuse me, custom. This is the retail stuff here, and um, what I want to tell you about them, they are in order um, right here on the table from a thickness standpoint. So right now, if we just focus on the forefoot of each one of these insoles, we're going the thinnest forefoot to the thickest forefoot. So just to give you guys a little bit of an example, 
Um, you can see how thin that is in comparison to how thick this one is by PDAG. Um, in comparison to the yellow Superfeet, these are close, but I measured them with the calipers and the Superfeet are uh, thicker for sure. And that's what everybody goes with. So um, here's, here's some things to keep in mind. So when we put in an insole, we're not usually, um, and, and this is even if you don't have a foot injury, but a lot of times when we're looking at insoles, uh, we just want something to, you know, make our bottom of our foot feel more comfortable and supported. Um, most of these insoles will do this, um, but there is other concerns too, and those concerns are if you have a particularly wide foot or high volume foot like myself, these insoles will make a huge difference most of the time for the, uh, for the bad. And so what I mean by that is Superfeet is the gold standard in insoles uh, for hockey skates. But if you look, they got the plastic bottom on here. And these ledges in the heel are actually enough, to, uh, they're high enough that they are high enough that um, it creates, it takes away an, the volume that I need in my SuperTac skates and they can actually put my ankle bone on the eyelet. And strangely enough, if I go to a, uh, a different insole, something like this one, it's thicker in the front here, but it's not as drastic or thick in the heel, and I don't have that ankle bone problem. So the insoles are very much enough to uh, solve or cause problems if you're not paying attention and it has almost nothing to do with the actual comfort on the ball of your foot. So uh, when, we're, when you're looking for insoles you're going to want to, um, if you never really noticed any problems with your feet and or any issues with your volume, I'd say retail model for super feet um, carbon are a great cho choice for you. But um, what I will tell you is that there are some clear winners on comfort between these that we're looking at on the table. Can you guess what is the very worst insole on this table? Okay, I'll spell it out for you. Speed plates. But hey, Guitar Slinger Hockey Channel, aren't these heat moldable perfectly for you? Uh, yeah, kinda, but no. Um, I have never been able to get these uh, to actually heat mold properly in a skate, um, nor has anybody I, I know who has these. <laughs> um, I was randomly skating with a dude recently, uh, and by recently I mean a year ago, because that's, you know, global pandemic, but uh, he bought a pair of these, had them heat molded, and he had to take them out and put his super feet back in um, in the middle of the game. And so those suck. I would avoid these at all costs. Yes, they're more durable than the fir first ones, um, and I think that there are some pos pros to them from the fact of I really like the grippiness of the front um, the front texture here, but it's not enough to keep it from being excruciatingly painful, especially on a foot that is injured. Um, what do you guys think is the absolute best insole here? All right, you guessed it. Nope, sorry, it's not the super feet. It's the CCM insoles that they don't make anymore. So why are these good? Um, these are good because they have a good heel lock due to the stickiness part back here. You can obviously purchase them in different widths and different arches. This happens to be a medium arch. Um, but one of the coolest things about these is not only does it have a really good rivet protection on here, but it has a sandwiched spongy layer on top that your foot really will um, adjust to and it will very much support your foot. Um, okay, so one problem with these. As soon as CCM moved to the ortho moves on the end here, um, they discontinued their contract with Curex Soul. Um, you can go and find these Curex Soul um, hockey insoles. They still make these specific for hockey, but they're just branded with this Curex name on it now. Um, and you can buy those on Amazon.com, uh, and the only thing they had, they must have changed them for some reason, but this 
squishy part that we see in the, these particular CCM branded ones um, are not included in the the new Curex ones for some reason. So these are more comfortable if you can find them because of that spongy part. But um, these are by far the best insoles on this table. So where would the CCM, where would the Superfeet fall in this? Well, they would be number three in comfort. This is actually number two in comfort. Um, the only downside of this one is it's floppy, which means that um, your foot does have a little bit of a tendency to lose performance because it's not rigid and it's also a little on the spongy side, but from a comfort standpoint, this would be a better one for comfort and overall um, support to, um, for your foot. The super feet will be better for the performance. Um, so I would say like, if you want to feel more connected with your boot, yeah, the super feet are still the gold standard. I just don't personally like them as much as the Viva Sport. Now the yellow, these ortho moves, um, you can see that they're not as um, tall on the heel part, which is good for me. And you can obviously Velcro on the proper amount of um, arch support, but it doesn't really work. Um, my foot doctor saw these uh, compared to all the rest of these, and he actually threw these over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, these were a very weird design to him. Um, plus, this is actually pretty hard, and it's not very comfortable in my opinion. So um, these are, that's kind of just a quick-ish overview on all of the main brands of uh, insoles that are out there, and there's obviously other ones, but just the kind of the standard ones that we're going to see in most hockey shops, um, you know, or get you can easily get online. Um, that's, you know, something you can consider. Okay, so, um, you know, oh, and the other thing is all of these are roughly the same price, so 40 to 50 bucks. Uh, so let's get these off the table. And one of the things that has been consistent amongst all of these is they're kind of all within the same thickness level on the forefoot, but range have a drastic range on the heel height, as you guys can probably see, even just from me squeezing them all together. I'm not going to measure these here, but I have measured them in the past, and there's a fairly substantial difference. Okay, so now let's transition to the actual custom insole. So, here's the custom insole. Um, what I will say is when I was designing this, before I even got um, measured for it, I told them that I'm going to have to have something that accommodates my really high arch, as you can see. We're going to have to have something that is thin enough up here that it won't um, kill my foot with regard to volume in the toe cap, um, but also provides enough cushion to handle my injury. It also has to have um, cushioning in the heel, which it does even though it doesn't look like it, and it has to have a texture on the top here that will keep your foot from sliding around, and a texture on the fore um, on the here to protect from the rivets. Um, the heel, I'll bring this in for a demonstration, but it basically has one of these heel spongy things under um, under that cap part. Um, and then the for uh, basically on the ball of the foot here is all leather. Um, so you can kind of see some slight impressions from where the rivets are. Um, this was actually a test to see if that'll actually last the leather part. Uh, I think it will last a while, um, definitely longer than probably the this kind of neoprene one here, but um, we'll have to see. And then we have the top is like a micro suede and your foot doesn't slide at all on this. It's great. Um, it's very comfortable. So what's this thingy? Well, this is actually just a placeholder, but these actually fit so incredibly well into your skates that you actually need this to pull them out when you want to dry them out. And this is made from like um, almost like nylon, like nylons, plural. Um, and 
you know, it actually sits over your arch and you stand on it, which is like super counterintuitive, but you actually don't feel it at all when you're wearing these. Um, so I was pretty impressed by that. Um, and you can kind of see how short, let me see here. You can see how um, this is not very thick right here, so it's not aggressively pushing my, uh, f you know, taking away that volume that my foot so desperately needs. And let's see here. So from a standpoint of um, the th overall thickness of the insole itself, um, I'm going to measure this again with my calipers to see here. What is that? Okay, we're looking at about 2.8 millimeters, or if you want to just call it a, uh, 3 millimeters, a little over. Yeah, and that's that's good. And if you were to compare that to everybody's favorite um, super feet, that's two uh, 2.75 millimeters. So it's only a little bit thicker than a super foot, plural super feet. <laughs> Anyways, um, so essentially if you wanted to create a pair of these for yourself, you have microfiber um, or micro suede on the top, leather to protect the rivets on the bottom, carbon fiber to uh, you know support your arch, you have um, a spring system, rubberized spring system in the heel cup, and then you'd want to make sure that it's about three millimeters in height on the forefoot so it doesn't mess with your volume. And I think that this is a good design um, if you want to really maximize comfort combined with performance in your skates. And I think that, um, and again, this is, I would consider this type of ex exercise to do this for somebody who has an injury like I do or somebody who's playing a lot needs the performance because um, even though something like this is more comfortable you do you do lose performance with how spongy this is um, and so you kind of do feel a little bit of foot fatigue um, if you're skating hard like for a lot like a long period of time so anyways um, so I feel like I uh, just wanted to share this video because I've never seen any other videos on making custom insoles for specifically for hockey skates, and that's exactly what these are. Um, so where you're going to go now to get these is you're going to go get a prescription for these and have um, like the orthotics guy make them. And you're definitely going to need to bring in your skates when you uh, have this done because they're going to want to be able to look in there and uh, actually see the volume. What's happened every time that I've brought up this conversation with a foot doctor um, is that they're always surprised at how little volume is in a hockey skate and how tight they fit. And if you're not careful, you're going to get something with a big old platform on the back here um, that won't fit in there and you'll be disappointed. Um, and you'll possibly have spent uh, 350 to $450 on these. Um, fortunately, I, I heard already maxed out insurance out of pocket, so those didn't cost anything for me. Um, and if you're Canadian, you probably don't have to worry about health coverage at all. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, they're, they're definitely something that I would do if you're um, maybe an elite hockey player that's on the ice all the time, or you're somebody who has an injury. Because I would pay 350 or 450 like any day of the week in order to mitigate pain caused from true hockey skates. It's crazy. Um, so, anyways, just thought I'd share this with you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or need some more detail, and I'll be around. Okay, take care.